poinsettia. This plant is from the family of Fabriciae and they originated from Mexico. They were introduced in the United States in 1825 by Joel Poinsett, who was the first American ambassador to Mexico and also a very renowned botanist. Hence the common name this flower was dedicated to him. Poinsettias have become a contemporary symbol of Christmas around the world. A lot of places grow them to sell them during Christmas time. Some people buy poinsettias from stores they, do, they just use them once and done, and some people want to keep them. A lot of people have had difficulties in keeping poinsettias throughout this, the year and then regrow them again and then have them again blooming during Christmas time. We have had a lot of success throughout the years. We have developed different techniques on keeping them alive and keeping them together until when it's time to rebloom them again. It's a tropical plant and it's very challenging when you need to grow it in these temperate regions. This is where we use greenhouses to grow them. If you live in the tropical world, it's fine. You can leave the plant outside. All you have to do is like have the techniques of pruning it. So you prune the plant and leave it outside, you will be fine. If you live in the uh, temperate regions, you will need to put your plant inside. Even if you don't have a greenhouse, you can still grow these plants over to the next year. All you have to do is know the techniques in watering, pruning them, and then the right amount of temperatures. So we will be discussing all these things in the video. Because it has such a long growing period, the, to show the whole concept of growing poinsettia up to the flowering stage, it's gonna take us up to four months. We don't have four months of video time to put. So what we will do is we will start with the introduction now as a part one of this video, and then I'll come and film part two onto other things like when they start blooming and what to do when the pest starts showing up, what to feed and stuff like that. For potting poinsettias, we use um, pre-mixed soil. This is Jolly Garden C25. It has 55% aged back. It has uh, Canadian peat sphagnum moss, vermiculate, and uh, perlite. It's a very well balanced soil which is needed for setting growth. And then after selecting the pot, I'm gonna use 8 inches earlier pots. You fill the pot. Get your soil in there, real good. Um, so every pot, every pot has this line. It's called the water line. You feed your soil a little bit above it because when you water, it's gonna settle. There is a reason for having this um, rim here, and we will discuss that later when we already put stuff. So. The soil should look like that in the pot. Uh, make sure it's packed right. Depending on which company you're buying soil from, if it uh, has too much back or too much sphagnum in it, you may want to add a little bit more perlite. Some soils are sold, they already balanced, like this one is pretty good balance, so we don't need to add anything, but if it was too heavy, we will add perlite on it just to improve drainage, because poinsettias likes to grow dry. This is um, how you pot it. Have a lot of pots already filled, ready and waiting for the consider shipments to arrive, and I'll go take a video for us so that you see after you water them uh, how much they will go down. Just so it arrives in here and it has been watered the first time before you have anything in the pot, it will end up with something like this. So after watering it, the soil settles in the pot. Now you know all the air bubbles are gone and the soil goes right to where you want it, right at the uh, water line. And we have a lot of pre-filled pots here waiting for the shipment uh, of poinsettia cuttings to arrive. Also, there is a labeling. This specific variety of pots here is called the Viking Cinnamon. And we will do an 8-inch azalea pot, 3 plants per pot. So depending on the end use, and how big of a bush or shrub you want to plant, that's, that will be determined by the size of the pot and the amount of cuttings you're putting in it. If you want a bigger more plant, you can put them in, you have uh, 10 inch, this will be the same piece, uh, Viking cinnamon, 10 inch pot, it's gonna be four plants per pot. That will give you a bigger bush, this will give you a medium sized bush. 
if you want them real small, we'll put them in six inch bottle in order to one plant apple. When poinsettias arrive from the nursery, they come in boxes like this. And oftentimes, they don't have a tag. And this one says poinsettia viking cinnamon. So just to open up the box. Uh, remember these plants have been thrown overnight and they may or may not be too dry. But so initially, in the previous clips, we uh, showed the tree field pots with these um, wooden markings. These are just to remind us that in these specific pots, we will have the Viking cinnamon variety. And inside the uh, package, Out. They have the plastic, they are all wet and nice. And this should be the front. Um, we expect that there are no damages. In this case, probably the box was thrown away or something, and there are some stuff which was, I mean, they just get off the cells. So when they come from the nursery, they are put in these osses. Just the regular ones like the ones you find in florist shops. This is where the cutting was put in and then it's rooted out. So this is already a rooted cutting and this is what we want. We want rooted cuttings here for ease of operation. Um, just confirm this uh, variety is the Poinsettia Viking King Cinnamon. Because right now you wouldn't tell, you won't know the difference if this is what is what. They all look the same when you open up all the boxes. So you get your cuttings and usually when you get the cuttings and you know this is a 10 inch pot and you already agreed previously that you're gonna put four plants in a 10 inch pot. You dig holes or you place the plants right into the soil and make sure the actual top of the um, top of the, uh, of the sponge or the osis lies flush top with the soil uh, you put four plants per pot now if you look you will see they lie right down there flat on the surface of the soil that's how you put it so now you have your four inch uh, four, uh, four plants in a 10 inch pot and then you continue doing that over and over filling in the 10 inch pots then filling in the 8 inch pot um, so <clears throat> when you get your nails done and you don't feel like putting your dipping your fingers in the soil which is for field practical purposes it's just easy and quick of doing it the soil is clean and the plants are clean you can use a wedge this tool is called a wedge and this is a 10 inch pot. You wanna do four holes, so you go one, two, three, four. You go get your plants. One, two, three, four. Um, as we spoke before, you make sure um, it's laying flat to the surface of the soil and have it up the soil. That's one way of doing it. If you want to use this. Watering this. Remember the first time we talked about having a leak. We have this watermark on the pot. Um, so you come in with your rose, we call these filtered roses. You put your rose in there and keep watering it. Um, as you can see, the beauty of that is the leaf will hold the water and the water will slowly sit down into the pot until it settles. By so doing, especially when you just planted them, you are actually even correcting the little tiny mistakes you made with the soil, like there are bumps and lumps and you flatten it up. 
So now you can see it is crushed soil all over the place. There is no seepage of water around the plant. Everything stays inside the plant and it's all good and beautiful. Um, <coughs> when plants are already potted and started to grow, you can see this is a new plant. This is just got potted like a couple of minutes ago. And you can tell the way the top of the soil looks and the way the cuttings are looking. They are not all straight or nice. But these ones are weak old plant. You can see the soil surface is all flat. And then the cuttings have already started developing more of the terminal, uh, more of the terminal leaves. And the old leaves will start dying slowly. We'll kind of like um, remove all of them. And if you can look at them, they're uniformly growing and they look more nicer and better. This is just a weak growth and we'll keep monitoring them. Also, <laughs> we start using these guys. These are called the sticky tips. We use these to monitor insects. Um, Poinsettias are like the favorite food for white flies. White flies love these guys. They love them so much. It's like you can use them as a trap crop if you're using some, if you're growing something else. So we use these sticky guys to start trapping up and controlling bugs. The next clip will be showing poinsettias which we have been growing on. Poinsettias will be pruned at the very end of the season. You can do this if you're in a big operation or you're just doing it at your house or home or if you're in the tropical and when they're done blooming you can just cut it down. We usually cut it all the way down. You can see the, um, this is the old scar. That's the new bud showing up. So these plants were put in here in the greenhouse and they stayed dormant for like two or uh, a month or two and then they started we start watering them then they started sprouting we'll show a lot of them starting to sprout up right now and most of them have already formed a lot of leaves most of these ones were cut down they look bushy some of them were in 10 inch pots but then when you want them to become a little bigger you move them up to a bigger pot maybe most of those have been grown here for four to five years uh, growth with and these ones are like two three years growth with and you can see they are like three in a pot and some of those were like four in a pot the important part is to where do you want to cut it depending on what size of plant do you want at the very end or the final results rather in two three weeks after they've been reactivated and some of them reported you can see now they are all in like started blue, um, shooting out leaves. They are full and starting to retain the shape which you wanted. Now it's not gonna be operational until when they start blooming again. But they are all now coming out really nice and beautifully. You can see the full foliage there and all the shapes and forms which you wanted initially. You can train poinsettias to become anything you want. These ones are being trained to become uh, standard. You can see there is strings and a stake there. So the strings are pulling the branches to the direction which you want and it will stay there. The final result will be a nice, beautiful standard. You can also train them to become trees, like these big, huge trees. In taking care of poinsettias, water, heat, and light are the most crucial and essential parts of doing the whole operation. Poinsettias come from the tropics, so they need 12 hours of daylight. And the mistake most people do is they subject them to too much daylight, then they will delay flowering. That's one of the bigger problems. Um, in heat, they can tolerate a lot of heat, even though sometimes they get heat stress. Now, you have to be careful when you want to water them, because you will kill these plants faster by overwatering them rather than leaving them to dry out. For example, this is a prime example of this. Um, if you look at the surface, you will see this plant looks totally dry, right? And then when you look at the plant, it's all flat. You will think, oh, this plant is dying because it's dry. Our idea is usually a flagging plant is a dry plant. This is just heat stress. It's so hot in here. It's, a, it's like 100 degrees in the greenhouse. So the best way to do is lift up the pot 
if it feels heavy and you're still not sure, you can take the whole clump of plants outside the pot and then look at the root ball. If you look at the root ball, it's moist. So this plant does not need water, it just needs to cool off. And cooling off, it will be at the very end of the day. So by then, the leaves will, the target pressure will come back again and the leaves will be up there and good. So right now it's just fooling us that, oh, I'm so stressed. I need something. No, it doesn't need anything. It just needs to cool down. This completes part one of this video series. Um, in the coming months, we will be filming all the operations from fertilizing to pest management to staking, also tying down until when they start blooming. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll be looking forward to presenting you some more nicer materials. Please subscribe to this channel so you can see what we do. I'll also be giving out some other videos for um, other tropical plants we grow here. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day and keep enjoying plants and happy growing. Thank you. Welcome back to the poinsettia series. Um, one of the operations which are very important in growing poinsettias is pinching. You want to pinch your plants so they develop multiple multi brackets because brackets are the ones which at the end will give you the uh, flower at the top. And if you want your plant to have a bush shape, this is how you do it. You pinch it so that it can break. And we do this mostly for the plants which we potted in singles. Sometimes you can do it depending on how you want and the uh, final result of the plant. You can do it even with the ones you put it in multiples. Now, in pinching, like this plant here, this has already been pinched, and you can see it starts breaking and it starts branching. There are a couple of different size branches which are forming. Now, for the ones which are not pinched, yeah. You look at the plant like this one you see the bottom branches wants to start forming so what you want to do is you want to go up here and pinch it and by pinching I mean you actually put your cicada there and just top it up so you do that remember when this was attached here there is too much shade for these lower branches to get light you want to do that so that the lower branches can actually get enough light and start developing. These will develop and um, come out and make a nicer bushy plant. Um, I will do another one. So you go at least, at least an inch from the top. That's the top part. So you go an inch down. You want to go to this. Um, underneath that leaf over there we do that the thing is you want to balance it in such a way you don't have you don't remove too much foliage but at the same time you remove enough for these branches which are underneath here to get enough light because when you put the plants like that and the light hits here and these branches are out then there will be enough light in here for these branches to develop so again you go you go like an inch from the actual top to there but I want to make sure I leave that leaf and that and that these are just you want to leave leaves on the plant for um, more light absorption and increasing the energy of the plant now <clears throat> before pinching also you want to make sure these ones I already checked the root system of the plant remember these were singles but you gotta make sure the root is developed nicer all the way to the edge of the pot that's when you want to pinch because if you pinch the plant before the root system is developed well, the plant won't have enough roots to absorb enough nutrients to support the upcoming uh, tissues. So you want to make sure the root system is well developed before you actually pinch your plants. Because pinching is removing a big part of it. So you do that. Um, this one was pinched like a day or two ago. You can see the actual upcoming branches are really getting stronger and larger and coming up real well. 
um, again I will do this one just so to make sure we actually grasp the actual pinching part which is so for this one we will go right there right there and take that off there you go yep so in poinsettia operations that's called the pinching and during the course of growth um, these plants will be a little bit more different and I will show them and how they actually start branching and how the branch are becoming um, in another video I will be showing how we feed them and some troubleshootings about the shape of the leaf what do you see if it's a deficient or it's pest or anything else and how to correct it but we have to have them first before you can actually show an actual example of them thank you very much for listening series before we go any further please like drop a comment and subscribe to this channel all right first thing is first um, we need to recap on our last video which was pinching we pinched a lot of plants here and I showed you guys how to actually pinch poinsettias and the purposes and reasoning for doing that now I'll show you the results of what we pinched the last time and where they are right now which is this now we're starting to see bushy plants and if you look in here you can see the scar where the plant was pinched for these plants which are pinched the only remaining operation here now is taking them because remember the purpose of pinching was to get these plants to be bushy and wider and to have that funnel shape so <clears throat> when we stake them this is what I do. You stack them and then tie. You use a string to tie it and then you keep another stake there. You stake them around this way because the plant is not as tall right now. You want to start supporting these branches so they don't flap over and they'll keep growing that way until they reach the uh, size where they can actually start blooming. So for now, we stake and maintain the compatibility of the plant so the plant needs to be a little bit more compact so this is what's happened after the actual pinching if you saw the part two video where i was pinching plants you see the same plants which i pinched uh, three four weeks ago so that was a recap for the previous video now today i want to show side shooting not all plants are pinched some of them where we want them to grow depending on the variety we want them to grow taller wider they can do it by themselves without pinching them so for that we do something called side shooting we have to remove the side shoots so instead of pinching the top this time we are removing the side shoots the end product of that is a plant like this you can see it's the side shoots are gone so the plant is really airy here but still it's really full on the top and this is where we're expecting to have our flowers these plants won't even need stakes because the stems are really thick and steady so they won't need any support they will just become big bushy tall plants and this is because we did some some, shoot, uh, some side shooting so um, this is the end result I will bring in a plant which hasn't been touched yet so I have a plant this one is full of side shoots and the operation here is to remove the side shoots remember if you saw part one of the video these plants were put four in a pot so you have four stems in here but they have so much side shoots and we want to start doing that so we will start removing the side shoots to leave one stem which goes up you don't want your plants to be branching when you're expecting it to start blooming at some point you want all that energy to be concentrated on the top not only that but it also looks way more neat and clean and best management but the most important factor and part of this is to 
to remove these branches so that the plant concentrates energy on where you want the flowers to be. Because if you leave these side branches, the plant will start blooming on them too. And therefore, you will have smaller and not really good looking flowers. Um, okay, so uh, these branches, like you can see here, uh, All you have to do is come closer to it and basically remove that one. That's a branch, so you take it off. So you actually, what you're doing really is just taking off these branches. We call them side shoots, which are basically just side branches. Because the plant will be branching and that's what you don't want. And um, a better angle from here, so, that's the side branch, you want to do that. Don't remove the leaves, just remove the shoots, which are extra branches. So you leave leaves, but you remove the, uh, the branches. See, this one has another branch over here. You can take that one off. That's a branch too, take that one off. You take these smaller ones, because they will become big at some point. So you clean all of these up. Go. Have this one down here, remove that too, and there is a smaller one there. Bam. So now, when you open it up, the plant looks like that. So, you don't have any branches, it's just the leaves and the top. And the top is the one which is going to give you flower there. Uh, so, those are two. Go to this one, same thing. You remove that one, uh, go to that one. There is another a bigger one. Remove that. Take that off. And there is another one. Here. So what I'm doing here, I'm just removing the branches. You can see that's a big branch. You take it out. Just leave the leaves. No leaves. Just leave the leaves. Don't take out the leaves. Just take the branches off. Uh, go down here. There is one. Take that off. These smaller ones are gonna come, become bigger too at some point. The big ones get out. That one, take it off. Take that one off. Right. And there. So you have this plant which has no side branches whatsoever so you end up with the plant looking like that That's how you do something. And you can see the top of it there. So this is where we're expecting the flowers to form without any side issues. Alright. These plants in here are a little bit more developed than the ones we just did because those were the ones I wanted to show how to do it. But these ones we have done a couple of weeks ago and you can see how the plant is now strong. You can see the stem is really strong and sturdy and it's becoming really thick. And the plant is very healthy because it was side shooting. The shoots were removed from the sides. And you can see the plant is so ready to shoot out those plants and become a nice, beautiful, showy, concentric plant. So that's what happens when you uh, follow these procedures and steps. You know? When you do side shooting, that's what you're expecting. And for plants which were pinched, you can see the pinched plants start producing all these other branches which are not that, they are a little whimsy, they are not as strong as the one which is side shooting. But the advantage is this plant is gonna be really blowing up like really bushy and wider and it will have more flowers on it 
Um, all this depends on actually what your end results was. This is exactly why we take these plants and then we put ties in them. So that because the branches are so like, they are not as thick, they can't support themselves. So we need to support them so they don't fall all over the place. That's the, uh, the staking part. So we just take it and then tie a ribbon around it so that the, this supports the plant not to fall over all over the place. It grows that way. But the branches are so many of them, but they are not as strong. And that completes uh, part 3 of the Poinsettia series. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to these videos. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Bye bye. subscribe to this channel you may probably want to do that now so that you don't miss out um, in this series i'll be describing the end product if you watch these videos from part one two three this is part four of it, and you will see where we started putting these when they were still little tiny cuttings and to now which is the end product now this is the end product this is the final product which you will buy at the store but in describing them individually, I will use one variety to show what we potted, what we have, and how they came out. And all those practices which we did before, pinching, side shooting, staking, whatever we did, how, what effect does it have on the end product? Because we have more than, we have at least five different varieties in here, on so many different pots, I will describe one specific variety and we will explore it from uh, the different sizes we potted and what that actual has effect on the uh, final product which is this thing. So stay tuned and let's go through all this journey. So the specific variety I'm going to talk about here is the golden grow. That's what it's called. It's a slight golden looking yellow uh, flowers. Now, if you follow us in the series, you will realize we have potted them in six inch pot. And in six inch pot, this is what you get. If you look at this plant, it's really bushy. Like there are so many branches. In it. Some of them are actually all the way inside the plant everywhere. And it's also wider and it's nicer and compact. Um, if you look in, you will see there is only one cutting. We used one cutting for six inch pot, but this one was pinched. So all these stuff out here, it's because the crop was pinched. So we have six inch pinched and it gives you something like that. And then we put them in eight inches too. If you remember, we used eight inches, we used three seedlings, I mean cuttings, there are three plants in there, but they were all pinched. So in pinching, it also gives you that side. So you have an eight inch, it's a little bit bigger than a six inch, and they were all pinched, so you see the plant gives you that characteristic of nice big round shrub. And then you have, now here is where the big difference you will see in the operation. We have here a 10 inch pot in we put four cuttings and we pinch them. You can see it's really shrubby. It's the same shrubby as an eight inch. The only difference is the 10 inch one is taller, the eight inch one is shorter. So it's a smaller plant comparatively. But it's wider and it's still con it's like a little bit more short. The biggest difference here is if you take a 10 inch plant, which was put in four cuttings, and we did not pinch this, but rather we side shooted it. So you can see it's really open. There are no side shoots. It gives you the height, still gives you a nice beautiful flower. It gives you the height, but it's not as bushy. 
So you do that for the height. And if you compare them, this is 10 inch side shooted. This is 10 inch pinched. You can see, if you put them side by side, pinched, tall, I mean um, wider, uh, side shooted, tall. They all give you a flower. This one is bushy and has more flowers, but it's still shorter. This has just flowers on the top and it's very tall. So you can see the difference here. That was showing you guys how different practices actually makes us arrive to different end product. Remember, every single cutting which is in here was brought at the same time, was given the same treatment. Except operation wise, some were pinched, some were side shooted. But they were fed the same, given enough light, the same amount of light, same amount. All, cost, uh, all factors remained constant, except for the operations of, uh, for the practices of pinching and side shooting. And the other difference is the size of the pot. If you have a pot which is only six inches, then you can see the roots are really compacted, which restricts the growth of the plant. And that's why you end up with a plant of that cell size. If you have an 8 inch on the other hand, you have three uh, cuttings in there. And if you take it out, the roots will be a little bit more spread than the one in 6 inch. And that will give you a wider plant which becomes a little bit more big. So, all the practices we did before makes you arrive to these conclusions. And that was the whole point of pinching, side shooting, and different pot sizes, plus how many uh, cuttings you're putting in a pot. I want to talk about varieties now. How these varieties will affect your decision, and depending on actually what you want to do and what your end product is expected. So I have here four different varieties. These ones were grown, all of them are in six inch pots. All factors were constant to them, to these, at least to these four. They are all in six inch pots, they were all pinched, the uh, cuttings were grown on the same day. But different varieties will grow differently depending on how it was bred. Now I'll talk about the color and how big or different these varieties are. We'll start with the, um, this one is called the autumn leaf. It's a blend, you can see the color is a blend of um, apricot pink and a little uh, gold. So apricot pink and gold. But the plant is it's like, it's smaller. Compared to the golden glow, the golden glow is soft gold in color. And the plant will grow a little bit more big. And then you have the Christmas cinnamon beauty. The Christmas cinnamon beauty, it's a little bit more of a um, lighter peach in color. The plant is a little bit more bigger as compared to the golden glow. Um, and then you have the Viking cinnamon. The Viking cinnamon, the plant is bigger, you can see it's taller. And the color is a little bit more of a warm peach. So the variety which you choose also has a factor in the growth. Different varieties will grow differently. Even though they were brought at the same time, given the same treatments, all practices were the same, but they will still differ depending on the actual variety. This will be explained before you buy the cutting. So depending on what you you want to grow, they will explain and describe to you which one is gonna grow what to what height. You wanna consider that before you actually indulge yourself into growing this poinsettia. So that's another factor to consider too. What variety you want to grow. Remember if you were putting these in 8 inch pot, it will give you the same thing. It will be bigger, 8 inch pot. This one will be a little bit more, 8 inch pot. Like that's the size which is gonna go depending on what the variety. So this shows you how a variety by itself will affect the growth characteristic of that particular plant. Now, I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about how varieties can actually revolve um, or reverse themselves. 
most of these poinsettias here are hybrids. Breeders have been in the lab all the time. They played around with the genetics. They, play, they do a lot of other stuff, which is a totally different thing. All we receive from a supplier, from a nursery, from a breeder is they will tell you this is called this and this is what you expect them to be. So I have a variety here called Picasso. We have at least 200 pots of these. Now, from the description, if you look at the pictures everywhere, Picasso is supposed to look this way. And that's what we are expecting as end product. But out of all these pots, out of all these plants, there are some which will try to go to the original of whichever the parent, uh, the parentage of that crop. So this is Picasso. And this one is Picasso. They were all Picasso. You can see this one has the characteristic which you want, which is um, a little bit of like almost red dust thrown in the creamy leaf. Now, this one here, you can see it started to change. Some of it wants to go real red. But you can still find some branches which are still staying. This is one cut, by the way. It's a six inch pot one cut. You can see just one branch decides to be like a little bit more red than the other ones. And then you may end up with a product like this. That dusting thing, very few, in like just one branch. The other one is like way far, but it's way red. Nothing wrong. It's like during sampling, quality control, you just get maybe a cup of plants will look like that. So they won't look picture perfect as the Picasso you see from the catalog of the producer or the grower, whoever bred them, uh, whoever give you the breed, you will have these offsets. It's like, because they were hybridized, they are really not that stable. But still, it gives you the shape of the flower you wanted, just the car has gone to its origin. Nothing wrong. Just like some of them will actually do, depending on the environments that some of them maybe didn't take the fertilizer right. But you can totally see one variety and it gives you totally three different things. So that happens. That happens when you're dealing with hybridized plants, especially in this situation. I know some people will never be happy until they see the red boy set here. So here they are. We have a lot of red pieces. Um, this specific variety is the amber, growing amber. And these were a little bit, because the are more from the regionals, they are a little bit bigger than the um, other varieties. So thank you very much for watching. I'm very happy, glad that you were here and you could have worked with me for all this Poinsettia journey thing until we have our final product of it and I hope you enjoyed them, you have learned a lot if you haven't seen some videos you can go back and watch if you didn't understand the terminologies you can go back and see exactly what I meant by some of the stuff which I talked about now for the end of the set series I'll be doing the actual pruning of them and the aftercare that will be our final video for the set series and this will be available in my uh, in this um, channel, you can go to the playlist and then just pull up with settings. I will have all the five videos. For now, there will be four. Thank you very much and have a blessed day and stay safe. Hello, welcome to the potting bench. If you watch the part one video, where I showed these plants when they were at almost this stage a little bit more developed and then we went all the way until when they bloomed and we had nicer beautiful blooms. Now we come to the stage where they are already done growing and they have already done blooming. Now we want to regrow them so that we can resprout them so that we can use them again. So what we do now is what is going to take us to the, the very first clip which we as you can see, we have already pruned a lot of them and I retained a couple of plants here 
and I will be pruning those to show you guys how to do it. But this is what they're gonna end up with. This is the final product. We will end up with plants which looks like that. And each plant, like let's say this guy here, is gonna turn into a bushy later. And then maybe this guy here will be a tree later and so forth and so forth. So those are trees, they're standard trees. And these ones here will be grown as bushes. Just to recap, this one here, that's a tree, that's a standard tree. That's a bush. That one is a smaller bush. And that one is a mid-size standard tree. So these are the ones I retained and I will be chopping these down so they look like this. This is what we'll be doing. So in cutting down these poinsettias, there are a couple of things to consider. What do you want the plant and the product to look like down the road? Like when they start sprouting, how do you want that plant to look? This one, I'm training it to become a bush. Um, the larger one, which you saw initially, it's being trained to look like a tree. I'll bring this down and I'll cut it too. But here is the basic principle. In the interest of time, here's the basic principle of pruning poinsettia. So what I usually do, what you need to do is you start by, first of all, you cut the flower. So you come closer to where the flower started just after the before the actual true leaf. So that's the first leaf. And this is the end of the flower. We cut that part. So we just cut the flowers. We cut all of them. So you remove all these flowers. Um, and then, after the flowers are gone, still got a couple more. Oh. When you're done removing the flowers, now for the leaves which you are uh, here, you don't cut them, you just snap them off. So the leaves are snapped, not cut. The flowers you cut them, but the leaves you just snap them off. So we kind of like strip the plant off. Uh, there is a good reason for everything I'm doing here. And I will show you in a second. But we need to strip off all the leaves from this plant. Uh, Please be safe while you're doing this because the poinsettia sap can get in your eyes and the euphobia sap can actually can blind you. You just want to be careful while doing this kind of operation so that you don't have sap all over the place and especially not in your eyes or some of your open body parts like wounds and stuff. And if you notice they just warm the growth this way and don't come into contact with too much sap. find them with too much foliage like that. It's a little tedious, but hey, you want to keep the plant and grow it into a bigger plant or do you want to go and buy an expensive plant later? That's totally up to you, but for me, I'll just do this. As a matter of fact, if you do it this way, you will be controlling your product. You will be controlling the plant which you want later, rather than having nurseries to uh, decide what they want to do. And not only that, but some people live in places where you don't really get them to buy every year. 
So wherever you have, all you have to do is just keep growing it. And then this is the kind of a final operation for them. Um, as a matter of fact, you see like this one, it has like water sprouts here, the small ones. We don't need those. So we just cut the branches themselves. We don't need to, those to sprout all over the place. In the end, that plant becomes this thing here. It looks like just sticks. Now, the reason we want to do that is when you cut out the flower, you preserve energy from being spent elsewhere but in the buds. When we remove the leaves, you can see this one was already done. So, this is where the leaf was. We snapped it off. That's where the bud is going to come up. So wherever there were leaves, those are knots, and in knots, that's where the branches will sprout and come out. This is where you want to just snap the leaf so the branch can come up later. And you reduce the size of the plant, this way you can control its growth, and then the outcome later. So it's the same thing, this guy, after a couple of weeks, it will start sprouting wherever the knots were. And that's how you prune poinsettias. So you cut the flower and then you strip off the leaves and let the plants rest for a minute. And then they'll start sprouting. When they start sprouting, come April, they will start looking like really like vegetative. If they keep, if they sprout more than, you can control it, you can keep reducing the, size, the amount of foliage in the plant until when it's time to actually redo the whole thing. So thank you very much for listening. This completes our poinsettia series from video, all the videos we compiled together. This one completes it. So if you watch the whole thing, it's a complete guide to taking care of your poinsettias. And that's how you actually take care of your poinsettias. So these ones will be grown again and the cycle continues. We will bring in new plants and we will start up smaller plants but then we will retain some of the good looking ones to keep growing them until we have the bigger trees or we have the bushes like the bush behind me so what's gonna happen here in the interest of time i just showed an example of how to do it in the smaller guy so that we can finish it quicker but then this one has to be stripped and the big bush behind me has to be stripped and the tree too so we are all the other ones thank you very much for watching and listening and Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and I promise I'll get back to you. Thank you very much and you have a blessed day. Thank you.